in my opinion. So, um, okay, this started. So, uh, let me um, let me mention something something that came up yesterday during office hours that I think is worth mentioning to everybody. So, um, when you go into a database, there is this line that connects you to the database. This is one of the you know student apps, uh, student projects. Um, oh, 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 ah, okay. Uh, you see why this should never happen. Um, yeah, it's too late, unfortunately. You will have to change your password. I'm sorry. This uh, this explains why it's better not to put it directly. So, uh, okay, I, I'm terribly sorry. I mean, can you do it immediately? It's a security risk. I, I'm terribly sorry. Okay, so I think you have just seen a, a live uh, uh, why it's really uh, not a very good idea. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, to let me share the screen for the people who are uh, actually you're okay because I was not sharing the screen. So you you are okay for a while longer, but still change your password, okay? Okay. Um, okay. Now I'm sharing the screen, but your password is gone, okay? Um, so first of all, so, some uh, some nuts and bolts. Um, how do you avoid uh, private information to be shared with to others via Git? Private information meaning, you know, typically passwords, right? You may, might have passwords so that uh, to your MySQL uh, uh, database, you might have passwords to other web services. How do you do that? Um, the way I tip, uh, so there is no fantastic solution, unfortunately, but the way I typically do it is this. I create a separate file called something like uh, uh, keys or maybe secrets or maybe, uh, you know, uh, authorizations.py. Uh, and in that file, I might write something like, uh, "Let me let me build one for uh, as a job, as not as a job, but as a as an example." Okay, I would put uh, this file into modules. Modules is the place where you put uh, Python code in your application that is loaded uh, on command uh, on on demand as a Python module. Okay, so here I would create a new file that is called something like. Uh, um, I don't know, secrets.py, okay? In this file, secrets.py, I can say, like, db password. Uh, this is simply a Python file, right? So I can say uh, uh, my password, okay? It doesn't really matter what I do, um, okay? This is fine. I don't need really to put, put much more into it. So here in db.py, I say, at the beginning, I can say something like uh, um, import secrets, okay? And then uh, here I can say, I forgot the exact syntax of this line, okay? But I can say something like plus secrets, uh, how did I call it, uh, um, uh, db password? No? You can do something like this. So in this way, um, the only thing you have to remember is that in, then in the .git ignore, in the files that have to be ignored by the versioning system, you have to add secrets.py. So that, you know, by mistake, nobody's going to version it, okay? And so uh, you simply give it by, by hand, I mean, you know, you email it, I guess, uh, to the people of your team that you want to have it, okay? And, uh, and this is also common to do in larger teams. So, for example, sometimes, uh, this is a, a common thing, right? Uh, sometimes uh, you have uh, two servers. You have the test server and the production server, okay? And you need to be able, you need to use the keys for the production server or for the test server sometimes, okay? And maybe everybody in the team has access to the test server, but only few people in the team have access to the production server, okay? Uh, because you don't want, uh, you, you know, you only want a subset of the people working with you being able to touch the production server. Uh, why? Um, two reasons, generally. First, you know, the fewer people you need to trust, the better it is, uh, sometimes, if the data uh, is uh, sort of reserved. And the other thing is that uh, um, the fewer people that can touch the production server, the better it is, provided the people who can touch it are good. Because uh, one of the biggest problems is always people making changes without communicating with each other, right? You do a code update, I do a code update, we don't know about each other's code updates, and then we know we, we break something. The fewer people touch those things, the better it is generally, okay? So, so uh, if you have a production server ever in this, uh, in this course, as you might have later on, 
I think it would be really helpful for you if you decided which one of the group is in charge of pushing to the, the code to the production server, and the other people actually don't do it. Okay? They contribute code, they test it, but they don't actually play with the production server, just because otherwise it's very easy to get it out of sync. Okay, so this is not really what I wanted to tell you. What I wanted to tell you is, some, is uh, something else. Have you noticed uh, this uh, very interesting fact? Um, we edit our definition of the tables <laughs> of our app, okay, and magically they work. Uh, and it's almost bizarre, right? Because normally you would have to define them in the database, and instead they just work. So how does this happen? Uh, this happens in, in this way. In the background, uh, Web2Py keeps a copy uh, written in a way that is actually not very easy to read at all, but it keeps a copy of how the database tables are defined. No, better, of how it thinks the database tables are defined. Okay, so Web2Py inside, uh, I think I still might still have it for this particular app in a directory here that is called, uh, yeah, I have too many terminal windows always, but uh, I don't know where it is. Okay, maybe I should just, I uh, know, uh, and I, I was looking directly on the student's machine, so I don't have, I don't have the files here. But, uh, but if you look in the, inside the databases directory, uh, you know, there is applications, your app, and then there is a databases directory. Inside it, there are many files called uh, uh, something something dot tables. Those files contain the definition of the database tables that Web2Py thinks the server has. Okay? Whenever you, uh, whenever you access Web2Py, Web2Py does the following. It reads the current definition of the tables, and whenever it reads a definition of the table, it, it wanders. Does this table definition exist in the database and match the definition, yes or no? And if it notices that the definition we have is newer, than, is different than the one it thinks the database has, it will update the database by modifying the database table in the corresponding way. This is why when we were playing with Web2Py in class, when we add a field in a, in a table, it just works, because at the next web access, Web2Py will say, oh, hmm, the table B board now has this extra field called, uh, I don't know, a rating. Let's create uh, the database, I don't think it has it. So let's add the field rating to the database table, okay? This is great as long as you develop by yourself, okay? These uh, two uh, students got into trouble because they're using a MySQL database and uh, and what ha was happening was this. So if I, if I uh, make a diagram of what was happening is uh, uh, the following. It's, it's important uh, for you to know how to deploy your code. Uh, these. I want to stop screen sharing. Okay. So what was happening is this, okay? There, there is a single database. So this is a DB, okay? But then there is a student one. Uh, that have some code and some definition of the tables, and there is a student two that has some code and some definition of the tables. Student one was developing, so the student one created, uh, say, two tables, okay, and here the two tables were created, okay, so Web2Py thought correctly that the database had two tables, okay, and this student was developing, and uh, Web2Py was automatically updating the state of the database according to the modification uh, the student did to the tables. Fine, great. Now, the student used the Git uh, to share the code with uh, the other, okay? But when you share the code with Git, uh, you don't share the content of the database uh, directory. I mean, I could have set it up so that you do, but I didn't set it up in that way because you typically don't want a version the, your development database, right? That's not code that you're gonna version. So I, I put it into the git ignore file. So this second student actually had a blank definition here. So Web2Py thought that the tables would not exist, okay? So when the second student tried to use uh, the code, what did Web2Py do? It did, ha, hmm, this table should exist, but it, I don't see a definition there, okay? Because in, you know, in the code, in the code, the, the, the tables are defined. So let me, let me put you, essentially, this is the code. And this is, uh, I write it long, but it's what 
uh, Web2Pi thinks the database contains. Okay? And so, you know, the code is version, but the, what Web2Pi thinks the database contains is not, right? So when the second student tried to connect to the database, what happened? Web2Pi thought, hmm, these two tables are declared. They're not in the database. Let's create them. It would issue the command to create the tables, and the database would say, uh, error, the tables exist, and the thing would crash, okay? So essentially, uh, this is what happens. But what are the solutions? There are two solutions. One solution that I do not, so I mean, the easiest solution is this. While you are in development mode in the first part of the class until you know the final maybe three, four weeks when you worry about deployment, my suggestion would be do not bother with using a real MySQL database. You work on your development database is much better. Why? Because the crazy stuff that your friends do uh, does not break your own code. And there is a lot to be said for that, okay? If you share a database, uh, you suddenly have, you know, uh, tied at the ankle to somebody else who may yank you away because he might say, you know, well, you know, this database table, let me modify that way. Because he modifies his code that way. You don't modify your code that way and now you crash and you have to go complain to him, you know, that uh, why did he change that table without telling you? You know, it, it's... Uh, uh, as long as you can, uh, if you're independent uh, on the database, is better for testing, okay? Uh, fine. Um, after, but if you decide that you need to use a database that is shared, what, what are the good policies? There is a policy that I do not advise and one I advise. The one I do not advise is this. Web2Pi has a way to say, forget what you think. Look at the database and essentially import the definitions from there. I tell you that now they are right. From now on, you know, uh, just believe that you can, you can use your current table definitions as the state of the database. I checked it by hand and it's fine, okay? But the way I really advise you to do things uh, is, is different. The way I advise you to do things uh, is uh, to add this line here, migrate enabled is equal to false. This tells Web2Py, Stop even bothering checking that the database is defined correctly, okay? And uh, create the tables and fix the tables by hand if you need, okay? At this point, if you define a new field in a table, you cannot anymore expect that things will work. Before you try your code, you need to define your field in the database by hand. And so you have to give comments such as, uh, let me, um, let me uh, bring up a, an editor, but you have to do things such as, uh, um, uh, how, uh, um, how do you add a column to a database, MySQL database? Oh, I knew it, but uh, like, uh, um, uh, alter, alter table, alter table, uh, B board, uh, add, um, for example, um, I don't know, what do we want me to add? Like a category, uh, which is a var char, so it's a variable uh, field length of uh, um, uh, 256 at most. Okay, this would be, um, if I haven't made any typo, uh, this would be the MySQL command that I would need to give to add a column the named in that way to the database, okay? And if I forget the syntax, because as you can see, I forget syntax all the time, eh? what would I do? Um, well, my SQL alter table, okay? And so this gives you the manual to, uh, for my SQL. You have to watch a little bit. There are many versions of my SQL, right? 5.1, 5.5. So try to read the manual that matches the version of the one you're using. But modulo that uh, you can find, uh, I mean, alter table is not going to change. Okay, but here you can see uh, add, alter table, uh, name of the table, and then you can say add, I don't need to say column, it's a default, and then I have to say column name, column definition. And I need to look at what the, which way I can give the column definition, and, 
and you know if I if I read the details I have everything okay so this is unfortunately it depends from database to database so MySQL has some comments uh, Postgres has some similar comments but not not the same <laughs> you know the data types are supported by the various databases are somewhat different but you really uh, want once you're in production to do changes to the database by hand okay one of the things is this once you are run, uh, once you have a sun, site running for real you will realize that the data is actually more important than the code. If you make a mistake and push some wrong code, fine, you know, you can push two minutes afterwards of the good code and you're still okay. If you give a wrong command on the database and you sort of break it, then you're in much, much bigger trouble typically because it will take you much longer to restore it, okay? Um, and so uh, typically you do the changes to the database with a lot of care. Typically you keep two copies of the database actually. You keep a testing and a development copy of the database. And so what I would do here is uh, something that, like, I would really use a web to ability and to say, for example, uh, if um, uh, request uh, env dot uh, um, http host, I think it's called uh, this way, okay, is equal to uh, my production uh, server, I mean, this is of course a, a joke, okay? Um, uh, it would need to be written in, you know, something like uh, whatever it might be, no? Um, uh, then I do these, okay? Um, oh, sorry, I always forget that on this particular eclipse I don't have auto indentation. Um, and I can say um, else. Uh, Okay, DB is equal to DAL, uh, uh, and I would just connect it to another database. So I would just create two, frankly. Okay, and depending on some command line option, or, or you know, I would have two sites basically uh, that maybe share the same code, or maybe they use different code. But essentially, you, you you want to have two copies of the database. You want to have a database that looks like the real one, and on which you can give your comments to change or add columns. Uh, and try that they actually work in the way you expect before you actually try these comments on the production database. So once you once you deploy your code, it's extremely important to uh, take extreme care not to change the, model, the database in any unpredictable way. And this is why I recommend that you say migrate enabled is equal to false. So the last thing you want is uh, uh, to depend on, on a correspondence between something you don't see, the, the web to pi state of the tables, and something that is too important, like the real database, for you know messing with your data. I would, you know, that's that's really a very bad, bad idea. Okay. Uh, any question? You are sort of following what's going on here. I see a lot of blank faces. Some people are following. Some people are wondering how do I even get a production database? Probably. Um, and I, I will talk about that a bit later on in, in, in hosting, okay? Unless you want me to start to give you now a, a little bit of lecture about hosting, um, or, or give you some, some ideas about hosting options. Um, I mean, one of them is uh, 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 Python Anywhere that I have not used seriously, and, and I want to also tell you about others. I, I could, how many of you are starting to look where to host your project? None. You're all at the, the, the point of let's worry about writing the code, right? Okay, so let's, let me postpone this then. Um, okay, so this is one thing that I wanted to mention about databases. Um, and uh, um, Okay, and then uh, maybe I should close this project. And then I, I, I want to uh, go a little bit on, on uh, input, output, and validation. But first, uh, let me ask you, you know, is, there, is there any topic that you would like me to review or do more examples? You have uh, always proposals. How do you display images in a page? So it's a web to pi changes as well? When you upload an image file, so the pi changes the name of the image, so you can't just directly reference it like traditional HTML. Uh, uh, is there a way to like, track the name? I don't know if you have a Okay, okay. So, um, so, 
So yeah, download the, uh, okay, L let me try to do that. I think the best is if I, if I try, okay? Uh, there are uh, various, uh, so, mm, I go to my Bboard app because uh, that seems to be the place uh, that I use all the time to make exam to give you examples. And uh, uh, maybe I should uh, have a new controller just for the fun of it. Mm. Uh, images.py, why not? Okay. Um, at this point, uh, I also want, so uh, the problem is how to de display images that you put in a table, right? No, it's not displayed without. So, and the images is where? So, ah, the, you want to have a static image in your code base? Yes. Okay, okay. So, uh, okay, let me say, there are, there are three types of uh, uh, ways you can display an image, okay? One way is that you display an image somewhere on the web that does not even belong to you often, okay? Uh, you, you can do that. You can simply say, uh, you, in, in your view, a tag that says image source is equal to, and then you say HTTP and the image, the, uh, and the image source, okay? There are many websites that try to prevent you to do this. Uh, this is called image linking, direct linking of, of images, okay? And there are many websites that try to prevent you from doing that because they see it as stealing the content, even though the content is there to be viewed, right? But for example, um, you know, I, I host photos on, uh, uh, actually, you know, my, my favorite site for my photos is SmackMag. It's one of these many sites, you know, it's like Flickr, or whatever. I use SmackMag. And this SmackMag has this option. Do you want to prevent linking to your images? This happens in the following way. When, uh, when, I am in a, when I am in a page, let's, uh, let's assume that I am in www.example.com, okay, is my page, and this page links to a, a page of my image gallery that is public. Suppose I have a public image gallery, I have a few that are public, okay? Suppose that I have a, a near public image gallery and with an image of, say, a spider. Uh, I like micro photography. So what happens? Uh, if you go from dab 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 to fish out that image of the spider from uh, from SmackMag, what happens is that when the browser accesses that image on SmackMag, it puts uh, in the web request uh, and some information in the header that says, "Oh, this request is coming to you as a referral from dab 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 dot example dot com." Okay, so you see the source of the request often in the, in in the request to load an image. Okay, and so SmackMag, if I configure it in a certain way, it will say, hey, if I'm not a referrer, so if the image does not, is not displayed in a page that belongs to me, I'm not showing, gonna show you the image because I'm just gonna be nasty, okay? I mean, there, in a sense, there is no point in doing it because my image, you can view it really well if you go to, to SmackMag directly. But the idea is that, you know, you want to draw traffic to the original site, okay? I mean, imagine for another example, uh, that, uh, you know, there is a newspaper, I don't know, the New York Times has a photo on their cover page. Their cover page, you can always access it of the New York Times. But, you know, they might be quite annoyed if you write your own article about the same topic and then you just, you know, link to the image that is source of the home page of the New York Times. I mean, they, they can say, you know, well, if you want to see this uh, image, you have to land on our home page <laughs> because in that way you have to read our advertisement, okay? so. Uh, so there is, you know, a bit of dispute about, you know, these uh, li uh, linking of image the images that belong to other sites. Uh, so, but you know, this is a, this is a, not a technical constraint. It's like a social or legal. So the other type of images are the one you put in tables. The intermediate type of stuff that you have is the one that you don't put in tables because it's always the same, eh? but. Uh, uh, still you want to belong to your site. How do you put this material on your site app at all? Be it an image, be it a JavaScript, be it anything actually. I haven't really told you. How do you put files? Uh, I told you that you should never use files for things that change, right? So if you need to store stuff, you need to store it in the database. But things that doesn't change, where do you put it? So the answer is, uh, you put it here in static, and then you have CSS, images, JS, uh, etc. Okay, 
And so um, let's put an image here. Actually, we have a, a few a few images already, but if I'm not wrong, I always have on my laptop an image that is, uh, you know, slug. Um, slug is, uh, uh, this is a good one. Um, how do I do it? I do, I will listen whether this works. May, I'll see. Okay. Um, I go here. Yep, it works. So now now I have my uh, slug soe.png, okay, that is there. And if I open it, it's, yeah, it's indeed my slug, okay? So uh, I, I put it into static images. And now I have to build a web page. So let me build a default controller like a, um, a def, um, I don't know, uh, home page. I don't know, why not? Um, and I don't want to do anything. So I return, I return an empty dictionary for the moment just because I'm bored, OK? And in views now, um, I go in, inside views, I go inside, I, um, I need to make another folder, right? Because I need to make one folder for each uh, controller. Each controller has its own folder inside uh, the views, okay? So the folder needs to be called images, um, okay? Because images.py is the name of the controller. And inside here, I have to create a file that is called uh, uh, homepage.html. Okay, fine, now I have a homepage.html here. I don't know what to put in it because I never remember exactly what to start. So uh, let me go a moment to copy this sort of uh, uh, thing uh, from, from another controller. Okay, from, um, from another view, okay, okay, fine. So now we are here. And uh, um, so uh, this is my image. Okay, no, not very smart, but it will do. Uh, and then I, I can do, um, actually let me define it in Python just because I have more, more fun of it, uh, doing it. Image, okay, so this is an image tag defined in Python. Uh, and then I say um, source uh, is equal to URL, okay, and then I have to say static. Um, images home page dot h no um, uh, what, what was it called images uh, uh, slug soe okay something like these oh i'm sorry yeah um, not an autocorrect error for once, eh? Um, and I think I forgot also parentheses. Okay, uh, so let's see whether this works. Eh? So this is called bboard. Um, images. Uh, home page, right? Okay. So uh, so I can fish it out. Of course, you know, this is displayed too large. And so if I worry about displaying it smaller, I should really go here and uh, give some other parameters, okay? So this is a parameter that says where the source of the image is, but there are other attributes um, that uh, that I could change, for example, the height and width. I just forgot how they are called, but my <laughs> knows what I'm about to, and so he's already searching. Like, uh, I don't know. Um, I don't know whether I, whether I, sh I should give them in this way or not. I, I would have to look it up. Okay. So so you, but this is uh, how you load everything. So essentially, static. Eh? Is uh, telling that instead of using looking in uh, is is a special name. Okay, it has a special behavior. It's telling where we have to pie. Look, this is a static file, and then two things happen. One thing is that it will be fished out of this uh, static tree rather than anywhere else. But the other very important thing that happens is that uh, if you if you look at the request, okay, there, there will be a difference in the browser. So let me uh, let me reload this a moment uh, while I enable developer mode. Okay. 
Okay, so I reload the page and I get the home page and then I get slug SOE, okay? And when I get slug SOE, notice that it didn't, didn't actually get it, okay? What, what the, the, um, the request headers says, um, uh, if modified scenes, okay? Do you see these? Eh? Essentially, what, see, what happens is this. The browser has a, a, a copy in the memory because I've loaded the page already in the past. And the browser has a copy either in, in RAM or on the disk cache. Your browser has a disk cache, OK? So the browser is telling the server, hey, um, give me this image only if it has been modified since this day, OK? And the server will then look at it, and in the response header, it will simply say 304 not modified. So you're good to go. You know, I'm not sending it. going to send it to you, OK? So this uh, caching behavior is automatically triggered by things that are in the static file directory, OK? It's done to avoid sending you every time all the images. This is actually really quite important because, uh, um, OK, images are one thing, but many sites uh, often have a massive amount of uh, uh, JavaScript, uh, CSS, and other code, right? Uh, that you need to download that is used to serve, serve uh, to render every page in the proper way, okay? And if you were to download that code at every page access request, uh, this would really slow down your browsing by a significant factor, okay? So what you do is that you, you get all that JavaScript uh, and CSS typically on the first access to the site, and then the sub uh, subsequent accesses, uh, uh, these uh, CSS and, and JavaScript is gonna be in the static file system, directory tree, and so all you're going to get is essentially a notice that this, uh, this, this content was not modified, OK? So this is really quite important. And it's done automatically for you by, uh, by a mix of uh, you know, the web server and uh, Web2Py that talk together in the right way. There are some headers that uh, Web2Py is setting, uh, saying this content can be cached. Uh, and these, uh, these headers are heated by the web server that then will uh, do this not modify response, okay? So that's how it works, basically, okay? Uh, and uh, uh, instead, you know, the main pages that you serve via controllers are never cached. Even if you ask me twice for the same page, every time I'm, I'm gonna actually run the code and give you the page out. Because, you know, there is no way to know. I mean, those are dynamic pages. And so it, you suppose I have a counter or suppose, you know, the data in the database changed. And so Web2Py, those pages, it will always regenerate and never try to cache them. Okay? So that's, uh, that's a difference. Okay, so actually, very good question. Um, any, any other questions or of, uh, yeah? That was great. Okay. Yeah, no, but actually, yeah, that was really quite important. Uh, it's important that you ask these questions because I don't have, you know, the full list of things you actually need to know in order to work. I, I do this class in a bit of a way that I explain you the basics, but then I need to rely on you asking questions. So um, what, else, uh, what else are you finding hard, essentially? Yeah? So I was wondering uh, how you could... Uh Require a login based on a condition. Okay, how to require login based on a condition? First of all, how do you check that the, whether the user is logged in? Okay, so um, there is this out of there is this. Uh, maybe let me go here. So when I write scrap code, um, but there is. Uh, I should upload this file then, but there is this out object. Okay, and auth user ID uh, is equal to none if not logged in, else uh, the user ID, okay? So this is, uh, this is uh, the, you, you know, the general behavior. For example, uh, now let me do one thing, uh, very simple here. Um, so if auth.user ID, um, like, uh, sorry. Okay, and uh, uh, else, uh, um, uh, 
sorry, am I thinking of some kind of out of kilter to this morning? So, okay, this, this will, will tell us whether we are logged in or not. So we can simply test it. Um, I should probably close this. Okay, so if I reload this, this is giving me welcome because I'm not logged in. And uh, there should be a login button somewhere. Yeah, it, it was just off the screen. But so if, if I decide to log in, um, I can. Uh, let's see if this works. Yeah, you are logged in. Okay. So the other thing is, uh, suppose you are not logged in. Uh, suppose I want to put a button for you to log in. Uh, okay. And and uh, how do you do put a button to log in? Smack in the center of the screen. Uh, well. Um, smack in the center, we will do it later. But for the moment, uh, let me put out the button. So this is a, um, a button, is an anchor of uh, class, uh, uh, so login, okay? Class is equal to BTN. You can style it better, okay, to look in a more amazing way. But this will create a, at least a something that looks vaguely like a button, okay? And now there is a URL, sorry, uh, href, okay? Uh, which uh, which I sort of always forget, and I, I think there are two ways uh, to to figure it out. One way is this: if you go in, uh, uh, if you go in the mod models and you look at db.py, you will notice uh, that uh, uh, the auth module is uh, is uh, quite configurable. Okay, um, wh where is the configuration of the auth module? Um, Okay, where are, where are the URLs of the auth module? Okay, so let's use the other way to take a shortcut, okay? Um, let me log out. Now if I try to log in, I inspect the element and I want to know what's that button doing. Oh, look, it's going here. You know, it's going to the default user login. And the next is where you want to go after you log in. So that's the format. It's very simple, okay? So I, I can uh, here in my code uh, do the following. Um, so this href is where we go, okay? And I say URL, this is a default. Um, So default user login, default user uh, args is equal to login. Um, and if we want to be fancy, we can even say um, what next has to be, okay? So vars is equal to how it is spelled that next. Yeah, it's with an underscore. Uh, vars is equal to dictionary of Next is equal to, and I can begin again, URL. Where do we want to go after we log in? Um, we pretty much where we want, default um, index, which is a different page, OK? Because we, now we are on the images uh, home page. And now then we, once we log in, we will go to default index instead, OK? So that's a different thing in place. So, now, I, I might have made mistakes, of course, as, uh, as usual, but, uh, but maybe not. Uh, so let's see whether this actually works. Um, so if I go here, I, I can close these, OK? Um, I don't want to be in default index, but I want to be in uh, images uh, home page. OK, now I have a login button, OK? So at least I got the button right. Uh, I can inspect uh, this element to check what it contains. Uh, Bboard default user login. Next is equal to that. Might be right. Okay, so let me click on it. Yes. And here I am. I logged in and I went to default index. Okay, so I was able to trick it into doing what I want. Great. Now, um, how do you deal with it in the code? Okay, so suppose I want to show 
there are two ways. Suppose we want two different behaviors depending on whether we are logged in or not, okay? Um, another, uh, uh, something that you can do is this. You can go into the controller and say def home page, okay? Um, if auth.userID, um, the user is logged in, and you can say, uh, I don't know, like a message is equal, is equal to, uh, well, welcome um, plus auth dot user dot um, email, I guess. Okay, this exists. Um, else, uh, message is equal to um, please log in. Okay, and I can say message is equal to message in what I return, and then I can go here and say, Instead of these, I can display this message, okay? And so, uh, if I do these, because I have to go back to, I think I say, oh, all right. Yeah, it's because I use the many different uh, uh, version of Eclipse because I keep, you know, each, each thing I do in a different place. And in, normally, I actually define it so that my shortcut just saves all the files, which seems to be safer. So thank you very much. So you are logged in. And now if I log out and actually go to the same page, because for some reason when it logs out, it throws me to default index. But if I go back to uh, images homepage, it will tell me please log in. Okay, so you can do these behaviors quite easily. Um, another thing that you can do, by the way, is this, that will be very common in your projects. Uh, this auth.user is simply a reference to the current entry for, for your user that is logged in to the auth table. The auth table is a table like any other. I could go and inspect it. So in fact, maybe let me go and inspect it just for the fun of it, okay? Um, here I'm uh, no auto test. I, I have too many. Go figure which one is the right one. Maybe let's just create a new one. So, um, So you see in databases, uh, these, uh, these files that end with the dot table ex uh, are the Web2Py representation of what it believes is the state of the table in the database, is what I was telling you later. And my um, SQLite uh, storage is there. So now I can do SQLite3storage.sqlite um, tables. Uh, Or describe well, why? Uh, what is the command? What is it? It's not describe. Eh? Um, I thought it was schema. Sure. Eh? Sorry? Yeah, but I did it and they gave me nothing. Ah, it's because I gave a semicolon after it. Okay, fine. Sorry, you know, I, everything is different. So, so this is what is in this auth user table. There is an ID, first name, last name, email, password, registration key, re reset password key, and registration ID. The other fields are used internally for when you, you, know, you ask uh, Web2Py to send you a new password, essentially. Um, so you can define additional fields in this table. So for example, if you need uh, uh, to, to add uh, um, uh, nicknames, uh, um, like uh, you want to have a, a secondary email address, or maybe you want to have a, a time zone. Actually, time zone is something that I want to talk to you about today. Um, 
or you want to, to have, for example, um, uh, you know, some profile information. For example, you can add to it uh, the, play, the places where the user can go in the site, okay? The, your, the permission list for the user. This is a good place where to put it, okay? And you can define additional tables, so if you look in the manual, attached to the off table. And additional fields attached to the off table. And the advantage of doing that, and we, we could try to do it, is this, that if I log, if I log, uh, let me log in again. Eh? Well, I can log in via this button or whatever. But if I log in again, eh? okay, if I now go to profile, I can edit some number of fields, okay? And if you want to have more information about a user, a very simple way is to add it uh, to, to the fields in the off uh, table, okay? So in db.py, here, we could add, um, I think for me the quick way to do it, uh, well, okay, now let me do it the official way. Um, so web to pi of, uh, Access control, okay. Um, integration, customizing auth, uh, maybe here. Customizing auth. Auth settings, uh, extra fields, auth user is equal to, and you can give a, a bunch of other fields. Okay, so I can just copy these, for example. And I can say, let's add, some extra info, okay? And I copy that. Now, I, I do one access. This access should have updated the definitions of the tables. Let's see whether that's true. No, yes. It's just printed badly here at the bottom, okay? I don't know why it doesn't print it nicely, but, but fine. Okay? And so, if, uh, if now I, um, I access my profile, I will find the other fields that I can fill in, okay? And if you read the documentation, uh, there is a way, I mean, actually, in the usual way, okay? Um, the, there is a way to specify what these fields are. So if you look here, these are defined simply as strings. But, but you know, I could have very well de defined, for example, that the zip uh, is an uh, integer. Uh, and if I did this, uh, I'm not sure it's a great idea to do that, actually, because uh, some zips contain a dash. But if I did this, uh, then, you know, in the zip code, I wouldn't be able to type any characters, but only digits, etc. So this works like any, any fields in a normal database, okay? So this is another customization you, you may want to make. Um, okay, so um, now I want to take a bit of time uh, to, uh, to tell you about time, how to get time as input and as output. It's another one of the fundamental things you need to do. And then I want to tell you a little bit about permissions. Um, if you have other questions, also let me know. I, uh, should I take a five minute break or not? Okay. Five minute break. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kind of what I was asking you. Is it about the in one of the results? I think there's one on that side. So I'm trying to do this because I want it to only require the login if you're attempting to edit. 
but like edit mode is enabled within index. So I can look through these particular syntax. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, I guess, do you know, because I tried doing the, the auth requires underscore login and see if there's a way to do it, like condition check. Some condition check, yes. I usually, you don't mind if I can see. I never did it. Um, because the only other thing I could think of was to have like a call to an easy option, but that seemed kind of No, no, but you can do so. You know, the reason I don't do it is okay. I think once upon a time I tried to use it, and I couldn't figure. <laughs> I think this was really long time ago. Wow. Then I said, whatever. I need to know only one way to do everything. Not in the way. So, so the way I use it is this: uh, that uh, um, suppose you try to do something and you have not done it. What do you want to have? You can. Uh, you may want a few things to have. One is that you may want to show the user a page. Um, I'm sorry, but what you're going to do requires login. You know, please log in or create an account. And you direct them to a nice page that is in that. Fine, that's option one, and you know how to do it. Because you can just do a redirect, right? Yeah. Now, suppose you want to start just, you know, boom, show them the login page as the last has called uh, requires login. Yeah. Well, I you just redirect them to the login page. Just as I did. There. Oh, I see. And so yeah, that's true. Yeah, so it's stupid, that, yeah. okay? It's stupid, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I sometimes see, you know, you should always learn more okay, ways of doing the same uh -huh. thing. But sometimes, yeah, you know, no, no, I understand. Because yeah, it would do the same, right? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that it's obvious what he's doing is that it's checking. Is the person I logged in? Yes, no, and if not, let's redirect the person to the login for the problem. So, then mm -hmm. that's, that's your set. So, you so can just do yeah. a very quick, like, yeah. Off, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a lot know. simpler. No, I, I feel know. like that's more readable. You, you, you can add whatever logs. Yeah. That's yeah. not dynamic. Yeah. Because then, even if your logic is very complicated, suppose you can move into database tables yeah. or whatever, yeah. that works. Mm -hmm. Whereas this, you know, gives you a little bit more freedom, but not incredibly more freedom, right? Because the test needs to be written in a line there, yeah. and so yeah. it cannot expand <laughs> to be a whole section of code. OK, that makes sense. So I think I'll do that. And then anyway, that's fine. Nice. Um, yeah. 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 All right. I ran into a call the private and then somebody actually closed the screen and said, I'm going to press the screen. Essentially, every page that I have comes up with the same reaction, and I can't seem to. I used this line of code right here. I can't seem to grab or store title IDs. Okay, great. How do you set up the idea of the title? Uh, this is an anonymous post. Huh? Okay. Um, so is, is the old, there is a, somebody who wrote an anonymous post uh, yeah, to set up the idea of a table on Piazza. Uh, well, now it's an interesting problem because I, uh, I would like to ask the person permission. Can I show this post to the people? But if I show it, they will know who the person is. Is that bad? Uh, nobody can reply. Um, if it were you, would it be bad? <laughs> no. What is it? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if you, ask, you log out and walk into the student, because yeah. the students yeah. can't see. But can I log in as a student? Yes. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. You can bring one of us up and have us log in. I'm not a student. Yeah, but you have one of us log in. Have one of us log in. Or you just like, just have a text. Yeah, but by the way, why do you all post anonymous? Is it so bad that you ask a question? <laughs> you ask, you know? I mean, come on. No, I mean, most questions are good, actually. So, okay. Um, it's, 